TimeRust.com proudly presents the Time Rust Brain Trust. Everybody, and thank you for joining us here on the Time Rust Brain Trust Podcast Special Super Quick Edition Quick Cast. Hey guys. Yeah, it's just me and Eli today. <laughs> Everyone else had to uh, say, hey, I gotta be somewhere else. You'll notice the audio quality is much greater. It is improved. Uh, <laughs> because we're... there's only two of us. And we're not omnidirectional, <laughs> so it focuses on us. Yay for Yeti Blue Microphone. Snowballs are good, too. So, anyways, yeah. that's it for the introductions. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, no. To your left. <laughs> right across from me <laughs> is Eli. That's me. And I'm here. I'm, I'm part two of this one part cast. Cast, 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 cast. And across from him is Nathan. Me! Yay! That's all we've got. That's all we've got. So, Eli! Running on a skeleton crew. What are you doing? Uh, Well, I finished the story mode of Batman Arkham Origins yesterday. Are you Batman? I was Batman. Uh, it was a fantastic story, it was a fun game, and now I have, uh, lots of Riddler crap to go find, so that I can see the Riddler, and face him, hopefully. Are you gonna rip his face off? No, but that is a fantastic movie. Um, but, uh, great game, uh, looking forward to playing more. I started playing, uh, DMC Devil May Cry because it's free for PlayStation Plus members, uh, this month. Uh, well, forever, as long as you get it this month. Yeah. But, uh, that game is not great. Um, I love Devil May Cry. It is one of my favorite franchises. And this game is not Devil May Cry. It just, <laughs> it just isn't. They could have called it something else, really. They they could have. They probably should have. And they didn't. Um, but the... Um, heavenly guns. The combat mechanic... <laughs> heavenly guns or <laughs> hellish sword. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Team Ninja. But... Uh, Wait, no, it's it's not Team Ninja. Ninja. It's what are they called? Uh, Hybrid Theory. Uh, uh, Ninja Theory. Ninja Theory. Okay. Yeah. Team Ninja Theory. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. No. If it was Team Ninja, it would be a terrible game because no, they're nothing. Anything after Ninja Gaiden and Ninja Gaiden Black was a big old pile of duke. Well, they lost their leader, and yeah, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, the 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 combat is is kind of good it's you know it's it's interesting the way that you can just pull uh either left or right trigger to change up your types of attacks so like in the middle of a combo you can switch to your heavy weapon uh or to like a scythe which is a much lighter weapon for juggling enemies um it's it's really strange um i don't i don't like the story at all really i don't like the presentation at all, really. I don't like the music at all, really. I did not like the way the game started at all. <laughs> Are you going to really. beat it? I am going to finish it because I think, as a Devil May Cry fan, I owe it to myself to play through it um, and give it its fair shot, but I am already hating it, mostly. Uh, because a lot of the things that I love about Devil May Cry do not exist in this game. Nice. Namely, the character. <laughs> like, this this character is like... Uh, he's a douche. Like, I don't care about him in any way. But he is Dante, though, right? He's Dante. 
but he's a crappy Dante. He's a crappy Dante. Yeah. Like he's a crap version of Dante. Um. It's kind of like it's kind of interesting how they're playing between reality and limbo. Like you're always fu- you can't fight in reality, at least not yet. I don't know about any change to that, but um, you you only fight in limbo. So they are able to do weird things with the world, like have it fall apart and change around you because the demons are trying to kill you. So, but it, I mean, it's kind of interesting that they do that. But overall, it, it just it's not necessary. Like. It's really not. Um, the what else have I done? I've been playing. I, I finally got into that card game, uh, that Transformers card game that Marquise and Steve have been playing on their phones. Fail. Um, it's, Roll out. It's interesting. Like the cards look cool. Like I had, I got, um, I got uh, Optimus Prime and Bumblebee yesterday, so that was pretty cool. Um. It's just a it's just a thing you click it every couple hours once your energy refills and that's you know it it wastes time. I'm also playing the GI Joe one that's similar by the same company because uh, one of my friend at work is playing that too and like it, it's it's kind of fun but it's mostly nostalgia just collecting like GI Joes and Cobra guys that you had when you were a kid. I actually have a scrapbook of GI Joe cards. Nice. So I pretty cool. doubt it's worth anything, but I made you know, it when maybe I was like worth six. Ten bucks. I, I don't know if anyone gives a crap about G.I. Joe cards. So, I, yeah, you know. I don't know. There, I'm sure somebody out there does. I'm sure there's probably some rabid lunatic out there that's just like, oh, I'll give you a hundred billion dollars for that. Okay. Okay. I'll take I, it. I would actually sell it. Well, I guess I'll sell it. Yeah. I let them cut me a little <laughs> bit for that. So, no, just not in the face. But, uh, what else? Uh, oh, I got back, my sister finally st- decided it was time to start watching Smallville again, so we are, we finished season seven uh, a couple days ago, and we just started, before I came over here to record this, we just started season eight, and I already know how everything ends, like, I, I've spoiled everything that could be spoiled for myself already about that show, but just seeing some of the episodes and how they do things is kind of interesting still, but... You gotta admit, it gets better... In those last few seasons. It, I mean, all the characters suck yes. really bad. Like, all of them. There's not one of them that's really good. Like, they all suck. Um, none of them are really likable. Like, you can't like Lois because Erica Durant is terrible. And she's 90. But I mean, you can't you can't like her because the way they do Lois in this is so stupid. Like she's just she's just completely boneheaded and terrible. Uh, They're doing Lois. You can't like Chloe because she's Chloe and she's the worst. You can't like Lana because Lana's terrible and also the worst. You can't like Jimmy Olsen because he's a doofus. Yeah, he is. Like you can maybe like Lex Luthor. Maybe, but because he does a good job of playing him, you could like Lionel Luther, but he's dead. So, I mean, I don't know if he com- I can't remember if he comes back or not after. Is Lex Luther still alive in your thing? Well, he did. He died in the Fortress of Solitude when it collapsed when he depowered Clark. But episode one, Clark already gets his stuff back because the Martian Manhunter comes and rescues him and tosses him toward the sun a little bit. So, I I don't know. Like, I don't even really like Clark Kent in this one. Because, like, he does dumb stuff for Lana all the time. And I'm just like... Why? Why? You're an idiot. She's the worst. Like, yeah. she has treated you like crap your entire life and made you miserable. Like... But you know what happens later in the show. I know what happens later on in the show. Like, I like Aquaman and... in this. I like Green Arrow in this. They're both very cool. I don't know who the girl is with the sonic voice what's what superhero is she supposed to be it's black with? canary dude black canary okay yeah. i'm not i'm not familiar with black canary really well she's in um what was it arrow because okay. she's she's traditionally green arrow's girlfriend okay it's funny because hawkeye and marvel has mockingbird yeah and and so green arrow has black, black canary. canary and see i'm not Birds. super like i'm not super familiar with green arrow like characters Except for the Green Arrow himself, um, but like, 
I don't know. It, they just make it so hard to like any of the characters on that show. Like, the the yes. plots are usually pretty good. Like, it's usually pretty interesting. Like, oh, what's going to happen? Like, you usually want to keep watching it, but you find yourself sitting there the whole time. My sister and I both will just be making jokes about, like, the dialogue is usually pretty terrible. Uh, like, the situations that characters find themselves in are usually pretty dumb. And, like, some of the plot devices that they use to move things along or, like, like uh, for example, the episode we just watched, they had, uh, Lex had Chloe in some detention facility and sudden like, she has, like, super mind powers, probably residual from Brainiac or something. And she's sitting there and they say, okay, look at these numbers that are scrolling across the screen Matrix style and pick out these phone numbers uh, and tell us what these phone numbers are. And she's like, okay, and she just starts rattling off numbers and solving this algorithm, like, instantly. And it turns out they're phone numbers for the Justice League members, Black Canary, Aquaman, and Green Arrow. And sh after two of them, and they show them, like, Lex Lu Lex's guys going and killing, like, capturing both of them. And then, after two of them, she realizes, oh, wait, these are... These are I'm I'm helping you track down uh people that I know because I guess she realized that it was Oliver Queen's phone number or something silly. So uh, like it and it didn't even make sense. Like how are they finding them just from their phone number? Like that does nothing for you. Like yeah, you could give them a call, I guess. Like they said, "Well, we're going to track their cell phones." Well, he Really? Well, are you, though? Not... Technically, you could if you try and get like, the position. Well, I mean, it's not you, that hard. you probably might be able to, but, yeah, really? I mean, is that what, like, what is it? Why do you have an algorithm for that? Why do you have a bunch of random numbers scrolling on a screen? And then, like, who could who could ever assemble that into any phone number? Like, there's no, that that makes She's no sense. She's the human computer. I, yeah, but, Brainiac I mean, part two. That, I mean, that just, that makes no sense, like. And hence why the show was not very good. Yeah, uh, but, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing all the rest of it because uh, it's been one of our favorite shows to watch over the years, and my sister loves Superman, so... Superman's all right and all, but wow, that show was uh, it, not good. It's, you know... It is what it is. It's Smallville. Yeah. That's about what it is. Uh, I had a birthday... Happy birthday, I turned, Eater. I turned 30. Do you feel old now? No. <laughs> I, f I feel exactly the same. Dirty 30. I'm still, uh, I'm still, uh, still completely obsessed with video games, action figures, collectibles, Pokemon. Pokemon. Like, 30 did nothing to improve my life. You're like, I'm 30, I must still like all the same stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was fun, but, yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's nothing going on right now, it is, it is the second week of January, it is boring as crap, nothing is happening. Okay, then. <laughs> well, well. What are you doing? Uh, I've been watching a lot of TV, I finished up, uh, the anime Tower of Juraga, I watched seasons one and two. That's the what was it? Aegis of Uruk and the shield, or uh, the Aegis is a shield. The sword of Uruk, and in the end, it was garbage. But for the longest time, it was excellent. Uh, the first season was really well done. It would have episodes that were kind of poor animation quality. You know, when they need to save on money to get to the. You know, yeah, they've got episodes. they've got the good animators sitting in a room drawing billions of things, and then then they have the they ones got the, they got the B team sitting there drawing like yeah character interaction pieces where they're sitting in town talking or something. Yeah, and it it, it takes place um, in a city near Juraga, the whole thing or the Tower of Juraga, which the whole thing is basically a reference to Babylon and Tower of Babylon, Tower of Babel, Babel. And basically, the there is an evil demon god named Juraga. Uh, Gilgamesh killed him over a hundred years ago. Gilgamesh is now the king, and oh yeah, by the way, he's immortal. And people don't really figure that out until I think maybe halfway through the first season, and completely. And, oh, and, by the way, he's immortal. And uh, oh, by the way, his spirit uh, resides in the upside down tower that floats from the heavens. And it descends and hovers above the real tower. 
No, it went Castlevania style. Think about it. Remember yeah. Castlevania flips? Yeah, the upside. Yeah, yeah. So yeah it, the other night. It, it's uh, it's like that. Um, the animation was good for a while. The guy is called the Aegis of Uruk because Uruk is a town. U R U K, and he is a um, what is it? A shield wearer defender. Uh, he is basically doing things like Piccolo style. His armor is extremely heavy. I mean, when he puts it down, it's like 100 pounds at least. Nice. So he can take a hit. He... That's like one of my favorite concepts in all of yeah. uh, in all of fantasy or anything. Like, the concept of having retarded heavy armor, like, so that when you take it off and it hits the ground, it shakes the earth and leaves a crater. Like, that whole concept is amazing, so that when you take that armor off, y- you feel weightless. What? And can fight better. Like, that that whole concept is awesome. I love it. Every time they do it in Dragon Ball Z, Goku kicks off his little wrist weights and his ankle cuffs and his boots, and it's just like, Goosh! and then he's like, all right, now, oh, that's better. <laughs> just like, you're an idiot. Why would you walk around all the time with that stuff? Because like, now he is, is wrong super with you? strong. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. And that's what's going on with this guy. He's actually really strong, but he's just kind of a, you know, an insolent punk. He got onto his brother's party, and it's funny because he's in the uh, dubbed version. They use a lot of terms like "looking for a group" and things like that to make it more, yeah. you know, uh, MMO friendly. Which is funny because it really does feel like they're playing a video game because it's based on old video game. Yeah, and you watch because uh, this was done by Namco Bandai and uh, Bones, maybe I don't know. But you watch uh, the guy kind of grow up, and he got kicked out of his brother's group. And then you watch people die occasionally. It's kind of sad when they do it. But as it goes along, um, he's leveling up. Uh, He had a band of people that he put together. And they're actually halfway decent. And there's just a lot of action. And uh, his special thing is he ends up getting the Sword of Gilgamesh that was used to slay the demon. So he carries that around. But his shield is like your typical uh, round um, buckler. Yeah. But it's super heavy duty also, and when he flexes or something like that, it shoots out a pike, basically, Mm -hmm. and then he jams that into the ground so that he can be the shield for everyone else. Weird. And then he takes fire and damage and stuff, and I think it's enchanted or something. Um, Yeah, there's dragons, there's violence, there's your typical stuff, and then they make it to the top, they kill the half-resurrected form of the demon that's really just a guardian, um, it's the ghost of the, of him. And then the brother turns on everyone and says, later suckers, we're going to now the tower of fantasy. Like, wait, what? Everyone gets, uh, expelled from the tower via waterfall. Don't ask. Weird. And, uh, then the second season is the tower of fantasy and it's not that good. The ending isn't very satisfying. The brother ends up being super evil, almost turning into Draga again. Um, it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of like holes, plot holes. So they basically screwed it up. Um, I watched wrestling last, I've been watching it. Uh, Daniel Bryan, see, had joined the evil, um, Wyatt family. In fact, JBL had been calling him Daniel Wyatt. (laughs) And it's kind of hilarious. Cause you know, he's, he's all unkept and, um, you know, just looks scruffy and stuff, and he looks like one of them. Yeah. And they're like, you'll never be like the regular people. You gotta join us, boy. And he's like, fine, you keep beating me. I'll do whatever you want. You know, help me. <laughs> and it just comes out to where nothing really changes for him. He's still losing occasionally, but every time there's a loss, he has to feel the wrath of the uh, leader's finishing move, which he calls, like, my sister something. I can't remember his sister's name. Abigail, my sister Abigail, and it looks like he's dancing with him for a second, and then he slams him down. That's <laughs> his finisher. It's because the dude's like a demented guy. From wrestling like... is really weird right now. Well, he he's supposed to be like the guy from um, oh, was it uh, Cape Fear, mixed with like some dudes from Deliverance. Mm. Yeah, just that kind of like crazy, crazy guy thing with a little bit of maybe demon in him. Yeah, uh, you just don't know, and. They had this whole thing where, all right, we're going to fight the Usos. So they fight the Usos. That's the, you know, 
that one tag team. Yeah. And the Usos are actually getting kind of big now, uh, which I think is interesting because I don't think they're that great. And the Usos end up um, winning, even though there's two, you have Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt, the head of the family, and then one of the top guys in the company fighting the Usos. And there's two bad guys on the outside also. Yeah. Still lose. Then uh, Kane. Kane is now corporate Kane. He wears a suit. He doesn't wear a mask. Yeah. He doesn't have long hair anymore. And uh, he says, you know what? We're going to have a rematch in a steel cage. And that's the main event. Awesome. <laughs> Great match. Great match, except for the Usos being there. Great match. And then um, uh, Daniel Bryan and the other guy, Bray Wyatt, lose again. And Bray is like, you got to take the Fury or whatever. And he wants to give him Sister Abigail one more time. This would be like the third time of the night. Daniel Bryan slips out. And then it's just like, back off. Just back off me, all right? Eh. And then uh, Bray's like, no, no, come on. You can hit me now. You can hit me. And Daniel's like, okay. <laughs> Beats the crap out of him. Takes off the stupid outfit he was wearing. Because he was wearing like a uh, utility outfit, you know? I don't know, a flight flight suit kind of thing like you see like really crappy pilots from the 60s yeah. where you know what i'm saying yeah and you know crappy gas station attendant from the 80s yeah so he's wearing one of those crappy suits takes it off just beats the crap out of bray wyatt gives him the big knee running knee to the face <laughs> it was epic when he did it nice and people were chanting yes 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 yeah because that's his thing right well he actually like pauses in the corner right before he delivers a knee and then starts doing his fingers up going you know just like this you know yeah one two three like real slow and the whole crowd gets with him at the same time and i was like oh my gosh this is amazing this is the coolest thing ever and then he gives the big knee to bray wyatt brays down that's the end of the show he climbs up to the top of the cage and he's doing the yes pointing finger thing and it was awesome like the whole arena yeah you know, 5,000 people doing this. That's kind of cool. So then they go, um, you know, to black. I was like, oh, man, that was really good. Royal Rumble's coming up. Yep, got to watch it now. So the other one was TNA Impact. I watched it last week, Impact Wrestling. Usually yeah. garbage. They had a really good match. So that show is actually starting to pick up. They need to sell the company to a new buyer to new owners soon and they're talking about a lot of different people um musicians actors you know are throwing their hats in the ring uh entrepreneurs yeah so it might get sold to someone um actually there's a rumor that toby keith might buy it i believe it's toby keith a uh, country singer yeah uh, there's a country singer interested because a couple of the wrestlers are friends with him <laughs> that's w- yeah that's weird uh, one of the guys interested, uh, supposedly, is uh, Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, he's a wrestling fan. Yeah, That's d- weird. Don't ask. I don't know. Uh, this is just weird. So, uh, it was actually really good. It had uh, AJ Styles as the I'm on the outside guy hired for one more night to take the world championship that he stole from the company or, you know, left with versus the guy that had been crowned champion, Magnus. He's this big British dude. He's young. They fight. It's a good match. Uh, tons of interference. Didn't have to be, but it's a good match, anyways. And then uh, it's over. Sting was involved, you know, trying to help out the good guy. Uh, all the other good guys were locked in the back. Then there were like twelve bad guys, and it was just too much. <laughs> good, good actual, you know, pay per view quality um, show. Uh, Bully Ray used to be Bubba Ray. Now is interested in murdering people. I guess he keeps putting. Um, was it fire? Uh, was it a uh, flame liquid? What do you call it? You put on like coal. What do you call it? Gasoline. Lighter uh, fluid? Lighter fluid, thank you. He's like pouring lighter fluid on Ken Anderson constantly <laughs> and then threatening to hit him with a match. <laughs> like that's like the thing now they're doing. I'm like, okay, so <laughs> Threatening Ray, to set people on fire. Bully Ray is going dark. Great. He lost his group, so he's going evil. Going like evil, wrestling. evil, evil. Not just like a douche, but evil. So that was wrestling. Um been watching a lot of tv because this loss of return justified is back i've watched a couple episodes of it it is fantastic it's the last season isn't it no next year is the last season mm. this is the next to last season they said you know what this is season five it's pretty good 
We're going to do one more after this to wrap it all up, and we're done. Amazing. Uh, Community last week, amazing. Um, that show is so much funnier this season, and the repilot that they did a couple weeks ago was hilarious. And now they've taken every concept that they've come up with and run with it while also staying true to the original format and some of the original concepts. I really like the show. I can't wait to um, see where it goes, and I hope it gets to season six. Because, you know, they say six seasons in a movie. Um, <laughs> Archer came back, and it was actually really good, but not as funny as I had hoped. But the reason it was good is because they had... You, you've watched Archer before, right? I've watched a couple episodes. All right, it's a spy show, just pure comedy. Yeah. They've abandoned the... Flash sp- animated. Yes, although it looks better these days. Um They've abandoned the concept of, uh, what's it called? The spy thing? Mm-hmm. Here's what happens. Um, the FBI bursts in. They arrest everyone. They shoot a bunch of people, kill one of the employees. Forgot to say, hey, Freeze, we're the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> um, Archer shot one of them in the arm. And they're like, we're going to look past this, but we're still going to arrest you. So it was a good um, episode and all, but the whole point was they have to, de- um, what was it, dissolve ISIS. Like, they are free to go if they dissolve ISIS. They dissolve ISIS, they're in the ISIS office, though, thinking, what are we going to do next? And Archer goes, I know. And here's the real elephant in the room. What are we going to do with literally a ton of cocaine? This door opens up, this behind uh, his mom's you know, uh, desk in the office, it is literally a ton of cocaine. <laughs> it's worth like $60 million. They need to sell it. <laughs> so they become drug dealers. <laughs> That's this new episode, or the new season. It's Miami Vice style. He keeps saying, Archer Vice. <laughs> like, that's his thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, Archer. You're nutty. You nutty buddy. Maybe, so, I, maybe I need to re- watch this again. Oh, dude, this stuff. I didn't care for it, like. Season two is better than season one. Season yeah. three is better than season. It was just like the first part, like the first couple episodes of season one, just like really got on my nerves. Like it was just real grating. I was just like, Ugh. give it time. It grows. It gets better. They had a whole arc um, on a space station. Yeah. And there's a cyborg involved that really hates Archer. Um, you got to see his origin as to why he hates Archer. Uh, so they have a, a, a storyline that carries through the episodes then yeah. later like, on. The first season was just kind of like, um, you know, building a foundation, yeah. um, experimenting. Turned out a lot of people liked it, and there you go. So uh, give it a try. If you haven't watched Archer, it's amazing. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, I can go through and watch everything again. Oh, yeah, I have. So, uh, watched a lot, watched some Archer, got caught up on Almost Human for this week. It was actually episode two, but, well, it was filmed as a second episode, but then it didn't show until, like, the seventh or eighth. Sleepy Hollow's back. Uh, uh, Almost Human's really good. It's good sci-fi. Everyone should watch it if they like sci-fi. Um, Sleepy Hollow is good if you like fantasy, uh, like Supernatural. You should watch it, period. It's from the guy that created Underworld. So if you like that style of action with style and um, he actually, they focus on uh, storyline a lot. Then let's see what else. Um, I bought your next, which is actually a hilariously good uh, slasher flick. <sighs> well, it's, it's actually really good. I don't, I'm not going to ruin it for anyone. <laughs> uh, well, it was made like a couple years ago and it just now hit the yeah. cinemas back in August and it did okay. But it tripled its budget, so therefore it was extremely profitable. Hmm. That's how horror movies work now. Low budget, high returns, quality. There you go. Um, it was very, 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 very good. I bought it for $17 on um, what was it, Amazon. Like that was a, I got the Ultraviolet, and I got the Blu-ray, and the DVD. I pre-ordered... Um, what's that show? Or a movie. Uh, I already pre-ordered it, but it was a... Uh, DC Comics, um, Justice League War. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I've mentioned that before in the yeah, show. I'm looking forward to that too. And then also, um, what else? Uh, I pre ordered uh, X Men Battle of the Atom. That's coming out soon. Yeah. That looks really good. It was a, supposed to be a decent story arc. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, other than that, I didn't get to play a lot of video games just because of uh, lack of time and sleep. So, you know, working 
12 hours a day kind of does that to you. Um, I think I think I'm going to get back into Saints Row because I did play a little bit of it recently, and I love that game so much. It's It takes from every good game there is. Um, I mean, I'm talking like Mass Effect, uh, other Saints Row, GTA, um, Crackdown, you know, just all the good parts of these games it takes and then makes a good game out of it. I, just, yeah. I love it. Uh, did you even get to the part where Earth blew up yet? Oh, yeah. It's... Okay. Yeah, I'm way but I'm way beyond that. Okay, good. Cuz that game is fun. Um, I'm I'm probably pretty close to finishing the game. Like I I, I just need to sit down and play it for a good day, maybe 2 days and I'll be done. So I I really really enjoyed it and I wish I could have got it when it first came out. Uh but, you know, life happens. I want the dub wub sub dub wub. Yeah. Dub step gun and uh super dub edition. But anyways, I uh, bought some games. I uh, haven't played any of them yet because um, they're not here. Uh, and that's really, that's, I mean, that's a lot of stuff. But um, just, you know. Just hanging out. Just hanging out because it's not. Making it through the day. Pretty much. Um, yeah, that Draga, dude, 24 episodes. I barreled, barrel rolled my way through that. So, all right. Um, we'll hit up a little bit of news because it's just you and I. So Yeah, um, I... I think I have it pulled up. If I don't have it pulled up, then create a diversion. Smoke bomb. All right, comics news. Um, Quick diversion. I don't have it pulled up. They're bringing back Wally West as the Flash. Frankly, he's my favorite Flash. Why are they doing that? Because why not? Honestly, mm-hmm. like a lot of people nowadays aren't really fans of Barry Allen because Barry Allen stopped being Flash in the like late 80s early yeah. 90s yeah i was reading flash when wally west was flash hmm. you know i liked wally west as flash he's more impulsive uh he's more fun and he's not a douche so yeah. i like the wally west flash and they they gave him like a cool tron looking outfit he's gonna have like blue lightning coming off of him now so it reminds me of a uh, the superman outfit that was terrible in the well, the late '90s when he lost his powers and then got yeah. new powers that were yeah. awful. Um, it's a combination of that Superman suit with a Tron suit, and it's not bad. It's really well. Yeah, it's not bad. Well drawn. So, um, so yeah, look for a new Flash coming out. Um, let's see. You got some gaming news? Uh, no, there's nothing coming out. <laughs> Continuing the great month that is January. There's nothing coming out. What's coming out? Nothing. Uh, The week after that has a couple things, I guess. But next week has nothing. (laughs) Next week sucks. But uh, (laughs) there was... um, There was an interesting little thing I saw about Dark Souls 2 earlier. Uh, The developers were asked uh, in an interview if it was possible that... Uh, they would be coming to PS4 and Xbox One. I mean, because really, why not? why not? They should be. They should have always been in development for those. It's silly that they weren't. And he said, no, they have no real plans of doing that um, at this time. They would, l- I mean, of course, they would like to do that, but they have no firm uh, decision one way or the other whether they will or not. Um, so, I mean, maybe... Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm going to buy it for PS4 uh, if it comes out. I'm going to buy it for PS3 uh, anyway when it comes out in March. So, uh, Or whenever, when does it come? Does it come out in February? I think it's March. I could be oh, wrong. Man, it would be great if it was February. But uh, <laughs> There's nothing going on in March. What are you talking about? I'm going to go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and buy it uh, for PS3 because I, I have to play Dark Souls. Like... I'm not going to be... Dude, I'm you have so many games. On that. But I'll, st- I'll drop everything and play Dark Souls too. Crazy. You know, that game, those games are so good. Like, I love... I love... Dark Souls. Love the Souls series. So um, so wow. So good. Wow. They're um, some of the best games I've ever played. They, they are fantastic. Now, did you... This was announced this week. Did you see the uh, Titanfall controller for the Xbox I did. One? It looks pretty cool. I kind of want one, but it's $5 more than the freaking game. Yeah, I, you know that's the, a little crazy. The, the price of a controller is really dumb uh, yeah. in today's economy. Uh, 
in every economy, really, it's dumb. Like here's a new controller. Die. Here, uh, here's a here's a controller. Costs you as much as a game. Make a choice. Do you want to play your games or do you want to play a game? Well, here's the thing though. Then the special edition. Have you seen that? It's two hundred and fifty dollars. And it has like a. It has a giant mech. statue with it that lights up and does crazy stuff. But <sighs> like, uh, that's dumb. Yeah, it is. This is a. This is a. Uh, this is a never before established franchise, and they're saying, "Hey, pay us two hundred and fifty dollars for this thing you know nothing about." Yes. That has no lore, no history, no meaning to you. We're just going to hype the crap out of it no and single, hope that you'll give us $250. No single player campaign either. None. Well, you know, that's fine because... It's max. It, it's, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you want to go online and shoot your friends anyway. So, like, it doesn't matter that there's no single player. But... But... It's got bots. It does have bots. It's six on six, and it's got lots of bots. And you yeah. can have up to, was it, 42 total uh, combatants? Something like that. Where yeah. they're counting bots plus um, players. Well, Titanfall yeah. mechs plus players. Plus players. So you could be a human with a mech, and then a bot with a mech, mm-hmm. and that's four people. They consider that. Yeah, so. they consider that four players. So that, well, um, I mean, which is fine because they fine, can all yeah. they can run around and shoot things, so that counts. Yeah, um, um, I'm looking forward to it. I, mm, you know, you're not gonna be playing. I'm, I'm really undecided on whether I want to buy this game or not. You want to wait till I get it? Well, it's or... not even it's not even that. It's just that I know how I am with online games. I prefer single player. Except in the instance of World of Warcraft. That is the one game where I consistently have enjoyed playing online with other people. What about uh, Halo 4? I'm, I'm, I've drifted you away hate, from that stuff. You hate the co-ops. So after, after, Halo, after Halo 2, I did online in Halo 3 a little bit, but nowhere near as much as I did in Halo 2. And then with, uh, with Halo Reach, I played that multiplayer because it was different. And I played it a good bit, but still not as enough that, you know, it would have been worth buying that multiplayer experience for $60. Um, the, the thing that I run into is, do I want to pay $60 for this game that I may or may not play more than six or seven hours? They gotta have a demo. If they don't have a demo... If they, yeah, if they don't have some kind of demo, I, you know, that, I'm, I'm pretty much not interested but i i think it's a really cool concept i liked everything they showed i'm kind of itching to have something cool on my three on my xbox one i mean i've got yeah. forza and it looks amazing well thief it's 4 a lot of fun out. i'm not buying thief <laughs> i freaking hate thief i don't care thief! i don't care what anybody says i don't like that series all right um the uh uh bu- 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 <laughs> You're like I want a good game on. I I want know. something I want something interesting uh, like something that really feels next gen. And I'm not sure that Titanfall is that because it's coming to Xbox 360 also. So, I mean I mean I'm not sure. Well, you know as recently I almost feel like my next gen fix isn't going to come until September when uh, Destiny comes when out. Destiny comes out, but that's also going and be that's on also going to be on 360. Yeah. So even that has me concerned. I'm just like, well, is it really going to be that amazing if all the stuff can be done on current gen systems? Uh, like, yeah. I'm just like, I just really want something that's awesome. I, well, the current gen systems are the current generation of these systems. It's really good. All right, don't don't pretend it's no, not. They're very good. I think what you're looking for here, honestly, um, you're going to get graphical fidelity, and you're not going to get. That's going to be it. It's not going to be anything interesting mechanic wise. E3. It's not going to be anything interesting AI wise. No, E3 is where it's going to be at. I, I call it be now. Something crazy. It some, better be something crazy. There's got to be something crazy. E3. We got the what was the Game Developers Conference coming up soon, right? Yeah. Um, we just had CES, which was okay. Um, was, there was some gaming stuff that came out of CES. It was all right. I want the uh, Razer Nabu Band, smart band. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. But right. I did see their I did see their plug and play uh, 
PC, yeah. their plug and play gaming PC, where That's you can crazy. just take the little module out and swap in a new processor. Or, it's brilliant, but it's real insane. crazy. But yeah. like, it'll be a billion dollars. Like nobody will ever have one or support it. Um. <laughs> yeah, support. Yeah. All right, we'll talk about the band no in a second, but I want to get out the uh, top ten real quick. Uh, Lone Survivor is number one with thirty seven point eight four nine million. Wow. Uh, Frozen was number two with fourteen point seven two eight. That's a big gap. Yeah. Um, let's see. The Legend of Hercules premiered, and it was number three with eight point six eight million. The Wolf of Wall Street, which I actually have a friend that was in that, really? which is kind of like crazy. Like as an extra or something. Yeah, she's a model. Um, tall redhead now i'm gonna to try to find her uh, there's a, i'll tell you a joke after the podcast is inappropriate but um let's just <laughs> say that movie is crazy uh yeah, american pretty ridiculous american hustle uh 8.302 million I want to see um that. let's see that's number five the hobbit the desolation of smog smog was number six with 8.022 it seems like it, you know, we've got four movies that made about eight million dollars so people were just kind of like, what do you want to see? Uh, um, hmm. Let's see. August, Osage County, which is, looks terrible. It's it's Os- <laughs> Oscar bait that I don't want to watch by yeah. the Weinstein uh, company. Uh, 7.158 million. That's number seven. Number eight is Saving Mr. Banks by Buena Vista. <sighs> 6.556 million. Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, is number nine, which actually is pretty good. It's 6.284 million. Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, is number 10 at 5.838 million. I, I gotta say, to go see that. Anchorman 2 has made to date um, 118 million on a budget of 50. So it was profitable, but I just don't think anyone gave a, gave a cap. Uh, crap? Crap? Cap? Uh, it's crap. one of those ones, like, where it, when the DVD comes out, it'll go crazy. Like, when the VHS comes out. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Okay, so back to CES. When they release um, it on Betamax. We're getting ready to wrap it up because, you know, this short podcast is starting to become long. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you about the uh, Razor Nabu. Okay. All right? It is a smart band. Smart watches. Okay. So it's the like the deal. Nike Fuel Band or something. It's better. Okay. It's got two OLED screens. Okay. One on top of the wrist and one on the bottom of the wrist. The okay. one on top is for small notifications. You Bluetooth it to your cell phone, all right? Okay. So someone calls. Does it support iOS? Yes. Okay. Um, someone calls and you see like a little flash on your band. Okay. You just look. If you're interested, you flip your wrist over and it gives you uh, exactly who's calling. Okay. Um, if it's text, you'll see a little text notification. You flip your wrist over. It scrolls across. Scrolls across. Okay. Same thing with emails, Twitter, um, and some other clients they're working on now. I think they're going to work it with Instagram so that you can actually get involved, like, say, you know, GPS and that sort of thing. It's got a, um accelerometer and altimeter. It actually knows when you're going up steps. Okay. It tracks all of that. So it can do workout stuff. It can do notifications. Um, okay. Also, are the screens made of like gorilla glass so that they can't be scratched or damaged in any way? Because if you have a screen on the bottom, you lay your wrist on a table, you slide that around on the table just a slight bit, you're going to wear a hole in it. It's not like a gorilla glass, it's like some sort of heavy duty flexible plastic. Okay. From what I understand. So it's going to be scratched all to hell. Um, I don't know, they haven't really mentioned. Well, it's still in beta. They expect it will be out in the next three months, but um, you're looking at $50 for developers. Now, here's the other stuff. Uh, gestures. You want to say answer a call, then you can go like this and then like that or something like that. You program it like you yeah. take your hand up and make a high five or whatever, and it knows your gesture because you programmed it in. And okay. then your Bluetooth would work, or maybe your car st- uh, car thing would work. Whatever. Yeah. Um, your home speaker. Uh, you can do things like say. Program handshakes to deliver information. So you and I have them, and we're hanging out, and I took a picture. It's really cool. We shake hands or bump fists or something. The proximity plus the action that we're doing causes the files to be transferred from my phone to your phone. That's kind of neat. You can actually set up, like, spy style, like, you know, say a bunch of people in a club have have it, and you meet someone for the first time, and you're like, this person's pretty cool. Maybe it's a hot chick. And you're like, hey, what's up? And you shake hands, exchange contact information by a handshake because it's been programmed to do that. Hmm. 
That's kind of cool, right? It's kind of neat. Um, it also has a sleep monitor device to let I you mean, know how... I mean, it's completely not something that would ever function correctly in United States society because, like, nobody over here gives a crap about technology, like, in that way. Well, they're hoping the price point will make it more interesting because smart watches are huge mm -hmm. and they're going to be even bigger. Um, Pebble released one that's actually really nice, but I don't want to spend that much money on a smartwatch. Yeah. The smart band does the simple stuff. I don't want to take my phone out of my pocket, but I want a notification. Okay. Well, I see it on my wrist. Period. See, I don't even like notifications on my phone except for email. And so, like, I don't know that I would really have a use for something like that. I'll have to see what other functions it has, because guess what? They're just sending out developer kits right now, $50 a pop. And if you buy it, then you could put it into a game of some sort. Mm. You could literally gamify your life. Because who makes it? Razor. What does a Razor yeah. make? Gaming, gaming peripherals. Stuff. So that's what they're going for with this. They're going for some sort of like new gaming device. And the potential is limitless because you have bas basically motion gesture tracking. The potential is only limited by how limitless it actually is. Hmm. Because nobody will ever do anything cool with it probably. I think that if they get a large enough install base, then more people will like it. It did win, I think, in Gadget's uh, device of CES. So, that's pretty cool. Um, I really I really uh, want to get one. Uh, heck, my girlfriend wants to get one because she thought it would be really interesting. Because it does so much. And, frankly, with the phones getting huge, you don't really want to take them out of your pocket. It's a hassle. I know you've got a... I don't have that problem. You have an iPhone, uh, my phone. My screen's bigger than yours. Um, yep. And the new Samsung Galaxy S5 was announced. Mine still looks like a phone, though, so... Did you see the Samsung Galaxy S5? Have no. Have you seen is that? It, it's like a tablet, right? Mm, it's 5.7 inches, I believe, and it has a curved screen. Not that's, bendable. That's dumb. But curved. They say it's amazing on your face when you actually use it. I, I don't and that it what feels the point super comfortable. Is. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that's really dumb. Well, you know what the big thing is now? Bendable. I, I think that is extra dumb as well. You can bend your phone. I think that's stupid. LG is making a phone right now that bends in several different ways because it's using super expensive materials. That's, I think, pretty awesome. Um,. You know, it can contour to your leg. I think that is really silly. The only place that they need to go with phone technology is it just needs to be clear. Like, if, if it's just a clear chunk of plastic or glass or whatever that has, like, almost a holographic-type-looking interface. Almost 3D. Almost 3D or something, like... Pops out at you. That's the only place they need to go. I don't need a phone that bends. I don't need one that's round. I don't need a circle to hold in my pocket. Like I don't need, I don't need silly things. Like give me something that actually looks aesthetically pleasing, and is, you know, futuristic looking. And that brings me to, uh, you know, things that get abandoned. Um, technology that's gimmicky. Uh, 3D. I love it. You know, I found yeah. it really inexpensive. And comparatively inexpensive TV. It was a, you know, uh, was it LED, 1080p, 120 hertz, 3D, 800 bucks. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Best TV I've ever had. Um, easily. I spent $200 more on my plasma that has lasted for a very long time, but frankly, this is a better TV. Yeah. So what happens? They self, uh, they're starting to support 3D a little less. Frozen, a uh, big movie for Disney. Not in 3D. Not it was filmed or it has the 3D in the theater. They are not releasing a 3D disc. Really? They're just like screw you, adapter, Mister. I bought a 3D TV. They're not releasing a 3D disc for that. I'm going to rent it one time. I'm going to find a way to rent it in 3D. Which LG is my uh, TV's producer, uh, maker of the television. They have a um, what was it website user interface whatever built into the television. Yeah. Where you can stream 3D movies. Yeah. I'm either going to rent it through my cable company or them and watch it one time with family members and then not touch it again until they release a 3D disc. Because frankly, that's terrible. Now, I understand there's a lot of Alice in Wonderland 3D discs sitting around. Same thing with like Wizard of Oz 3D. I'm going to buy those at some point. And my collection is already, I think I have like 20 you 3D have a lot. movies. You have a lot of 3D movies. And it's going to get bigger. Also, Steve, when this, no, I'm coming for you because I want my Man of Steel 3D. I want it. 
Um, I also want uh, Invincible Volume One. I really do. Uh, but anyways, so I really liked the you know 3D movies. And I want to get Frozen because I'm trying to get more kids movies in my life so that I can be less evil. But when they pull crap like this, I kind of want to stab Walt Disney's Frozen head. So, anyways, um, I really uh, <laughs> wanted to watch that movie in 3D at home, so I'll just see what my options are when it comes out and go from there. I, you know, if they have the early rent 3D option where I could rent it like tomorrow, uh -huh. you better believe this weekend I'm going to be renting it and then forgetting about it. Listen to some terrible singing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, CES, uh, the big thing is 4K and ultra high def. Mm -hmm. 4K is wide, super wide, ridiculously cartoonishly wide to get all the pixels in. And then ultra high def is um, not as good, but it's the same size, like the same dimensions as current TVs in terms of physical. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to buy a silly looking TV, but the picture's not going to be as sharp. So, and then, of course, there's that whole thing where, you know, Michael Bay... Uh, or was it Barkheimer? I think it was Bay. Got on stage and screwed up, and that was hilarious. Um, but he came out to support Samsung TVs. Mm -hmm. And Samsung makes a good TV. Um, I think it's Samsung. That's my favorite brand. I like Samsung Electronics, but they didn't support passive 3D, which I thought was a mistake, because... Who... I think that is a mistake. Like, I, I, they, their whole thing, they just want they want money. They want you to buy their expensive... Glasses. Active glasses. Yeah, for 130 110 150 dollars yeah. 200 dollars depends yeah. on who you have. They can sell those all day. I don't want a single pair of theirs, those ever, and I want to be able to take my glasses home from the movies, especially the limited edition Hobbit glasses. Uh, I already have one for, um, what was it? Uh, what was the first movie? What was the title of the first movie? The Hobbit... I don't know. Just Darren back again? No, that's the last one. That's the last one. <laughs> Kill me. And then uh, I got a set for uh, Desolation of Smaug. Smaug. Yeah. Smaug. Which I will use on my Desolation of Smaug 3D, blah, blah, blah. Um, I pre-ordered, by the way, a Game of Thrones Season 3. Uh, it comes with the DVDs this time and digital copy. So I'm like, okay, so you didn't do this at all last time, but now you're giving me the ultraviolet copy of Season 3. Well, I have HBO Go, so... Shut up! I don't know. Um, That's silly. It was. It was are really they silly. charging way more for it now too? It's four dollars more. Like right now, if you order it, um, it's four dollars more than the DVD box set okay. for the Blu-ray. So it's really good. But then when it goes off of that sale, yeah, then it's going to be stupid. It's like eighty dollars. Yeah, because so. they're like they they still want fifty dollars for season one, and I'm just like. No. Who are you? Like, I can walk into Walmart and get it for, like, 35 most days. So, that's what you should do. It's a good show. Um, uh, or I could go on Amazon and watch the first episode completely for free if you're a member of Prime. Uh, or maybe it's only if you have a Kindle Fire. I don't remember. I don't, know. I don't remember if it's just Prime or if you only have Kindle Fire. I don't know. Uh, but, like, the... Uh, um. Yeah, I don't know. So that brings us to the finale, because Eli's lost his poo. Um, I think uh, what we're going to focus on is getting more reviews out. Do you think you can get me some reviews for some games? Probably not. You're a terrible human being. <laughs> I'm terrible. just being honest. <laughs> You're like, I, I, can't, I can't write anymore. I'm just like, being honest. Do the podcast. It's probably not going to happen. <laughs> you have an easier job now. I know. <laughs> I don't like, know. Oh, well. Um... And then, uh, what else? Let's see. Not really got a whole lot going on for the cast. We've got the anniversary coming up. I don't know yep. if we'll do anything special for that, because clearly not everyone's <laughs> clearly here. we have a struggle bus full of people somewhere in the world that can't figure out how to get here. Yeah. Um, aw. Anyways, <laughs> so that's going to wrap it up for us. Um, my name is Bacon. Wait, what? I haven't been drinking, but I think I should. You probably water. should. I'm going to drink a lot of water. I drink a lot it's of water. Good for you. Anyways, Eli. Do stuff. Go to us on <laughs> timerest.com. Welcome to the finale. <laughs> uh, this is a website, timerest.com. Let's just have a moment of silence. Come on, Marquise and Steve, speak up. <laughs> it's really Anyways, awkward. It's really it weird. It is. So we're going to call it. So thank you for joining us here on 
the Time Rust Brain Trust podcast. Hope you had a good time, and we'll be back in a week. Bye bye. Peace out.